Welcome back to ECMID TV here at the Congress 2015. Our next guest is a very special guest indeed, as we'll find out for a number of reasons. His name is Mark Bonton. He's a professor in epidemiology and infectious diseases at the UMC in Utrecht. But he's been telling me backstage that it's more about clinical epidemiology than molecular epidemiology. Let's find out why. First of all, good afternoon, welcome. Thank you. What a pleasure to have you here. Why the difference? What's the difference? Well, the molecular epidemiology, nowadays the molecular part is more in genomics. That's not really my level of expertise. I'm more in the clinical epidemiology, doing the studies with patients, looking for the relevant outcomes. Excellent. Now, I know you're here at ECMID as you're a big supporter. You're obviously heavily involved in ECMID as well, the organization. But you're a very special guest on the show here on our TV channel uh, because you're up for quite a major award. The Excellence Award for Exmid 2015. That's correct. And you say that so modestly. How does that make you feel? It makes me proud. I'm sure it does, sir. Yes. Yeah. Why do you think you are the recipient of this year's Excellence Award, sir? You should ask the committee that gave me the award, but I may have to do with, let's say, the research that I've been doing for the last 20 years. When you get handed the award tomorrow, um, what will be going through your mind? Well, that's a moment to reflect on uh, what has been done and to look forward what still needs to be done. And the research that you're heavily involved in at the moment, the research that, as you say, may have led to the granting of this very prestigious award, what have you been doing specifically, sir? Well, my research team has always been antibiotic resistance, which, when I started doing research, was considered a, a minor problem and through the years has ranked to the tops of the political agenda now in almost every country. So with that, we say in Dutch, I had the wind in the sails. I can understand exactly as why. Louis van Gaal would express that as well. But it's, the antibiotic resistance is, is becoming a large problem and we need still to do many, many things to slow down the emergence of antibiotic resistance and to collaborate with uh, industrial partners to get new antibiotics. You say it's gone to the top of the so-called political agenda right now. Were you always aware that this was a major problem, antibiotic resistance? No, no. The, I was always aware that there was a slow increase in antibiotic resistance, which is inevitable if you use antibiotics. I'm very, very surprised uh, by the recent developments in carbapenem resistance that have emerged so rapidly and they are coming from such an unexpected area from actually from the developing countries towards us which was completely unexpected and unpredicted and therefore this is a major threat for which we don't have an answer yet. What are the biggest problems presented by antibiotic resistance in the human body? Well, in the future we will see if this, let's say, emergence of carbapenem resistance continues and there's no reason to think that it will stop we will see treatments becoming impossible in very sick patients, at least in the developed world, where we have patients in ICUs, patients receiving transplants, hematology, hematology pa patients, they may get infections that we can no longer treat. So then we have given them a very, very expensive treatment, but we will, may lose, or the threat is that we lose them because of a very simple infection that was to be treated, but is no longer to be treated. In addition to that, there is a threat that many infections in the developing world will become in, untreatable. Um, the predictions for the amount of infections there are very, very difficult because we have hardly any data there, but therefore we can also not predict how much of a burden this will cause in the developing countries, but all the predictions that we have so far is that it will be a huge problem. How are we doing in the world right now in terms of developing new, stronger, more advanced antibiotics? Um, there are activities, there are reports of new compounds or new assets that in the lab look very promising. Those new discoveries get a lot of media attention and people think that it will help us, but so far all these new compounds are directed against gram-positive bacteria and the problem is in the gram-negatives. And actually in the arena of gram-negative bacteria there's hardly anything new coming. And antibiotic resistance became a problem 10, 15 years, let's say was predicted to become a problem about 10, 15 years ago. So all the expertise has been developed against the gram-positives, which were the main problems then. But it has completely changed in the last five to 10 years. So all these expertise, all these groups that have the expertise now should shift to the gram-negatives, but 
nobody has that expertise yet. Is Big Pharma lagging behind? Enormously. And so the new developments, the new exciting modern developments, should I say, are they coming from the smaller emerging startups, the SME space? W they must come from that. Uh, because Big Pharma is, to the best of my knowledge, not really investing in those developments anymore. Actually, they're withdrawing from the field. So uh, instead of having more involvement of Big Pharma, we see that we have less. So it must come from the academics, from the small SMEs, and then they need the support to, let's say, to fur for the further development, which inevitably should be taken over by Big Pharma, because the final stages of drug development are very, very expensive with high risk, and it, that cannot be taken by universities. So there should be involvement then with what we call Big Pharma. Is a reflection of the award that you're collecting this year perhaps indicative of the fact that Exmid is well aware of the situation and wants to highlight the cause through yourself, sir? Not sure whether that uh, has contributed to that decision, but uh, I'm sure that many people in this professional uh, society are aware of this problem and are seeking attention, uh, creating attention for this problem, which is becoming a problem. And this is your whole area of research at this point in time at the moment? Not the whole area, but the major part. Excellent. Any big trends that you can predict in the next few years? Things you'd like to see, but things that you'll also believe will occur? Well, we will see more antibiotic resistant problems coming to Europe, definitely. Um, we will need to engage with the pharmaceutical industry to bring whatever they come up with more rapidly to the patients. And that's an initiative that I'm heavily involved, with, involved in with the IMI funded projects in the New Drugs for Bad Bugs program. Um, I'm involved in three projects called Combact, Combact, Combact Care, Combact Magnet, and there we collaborate with many academic partners from Europe and the industrial industry to setting up a huge new clinical trial network in which we can clinically evaluate any new compounds that come to the market. I love the New Drugs for Bad Bugs scenario as well. It's a very catchy name. It is. Is it something that's spreading like a virus, if I may say so? Well, <laughs> the name should spread. Yes. People should be aware that this initiative is ongoing and that they can be part of it. Because what we aim to do is to build a clinical trial network that uh, is present in all European countries. Especially in those countries with the high levels of antibiotic resistance, which is... Fortunately, not in the Netherlands, so we need to collaborate with the people in southern and southern eastern Europe where the antibiotic res resistance problems are, let's say, most dramatic in Europe. Excellent. The words of the recipient of the Excellence Award from Exmed for 2015, Professor Mark Bunton. It's been a real pleasure having you on the show, sir. I know that you're going to enjoy the Congress, A, because you're getting the award, but B, because, hey, this is Exmed. And it is what it is. Do you always get a big buzz out of it? Yes, I do. I always tremendously enjoy this conference. And a man of your stature, just very briefly in closing, how on earth do you divide your time? How do you decide amongst this incredible Congress what it is that you most want to do? I mostly enjoy to, uh, to walk along the posters and to attend the uh, oral presentations of the uh, young, uh, young investigators. Terrific. And advice for any new first-time delegates? here at Congress this year? Well, and first of all, and, and, and enjoy and, and, go, and, and go take a look at the new developments in your area and take advantage of it. Brilliant, sir. Thank you very much. Professor Mark Bonton, thanks for being with us on ECMID TV. My pleasure. Thank you, sir.